Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at this Yes Prep virtual college fair. We are so excited to have you here today. We have some fantastic schools here with us. My name is Jeannie and I will be your facilitator today. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Your camera and your microphone are off, so your panelists cannot see or hear you today. However, there is a Q&A button on your screen. Please use that to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You don't have to wait until a certain institution is presenting. If you have questions for any or all of our schools here today, go ahead and use that Q&A button. This is one of many different sessions happening, so make sure and check the schedule on the website for all of the others. But keep in mind, this presentation, along with all of the others, are being recorded, and you can find those at strivescan.com forward slash yes prep. I will put that in the chat for you all as well. But now we're going to go ahead and kick it off with our first institution. Starting us off today is the University of Houston. Take it away whenever you are ready. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Kelsey. I am an admissions advisor at the University of Houston. Um, I believe my colleague Mariana is going to share a quick presentation that we have to share with everyone when you guys are ready. So I know that it seems like most of our students are located in Houston. So maybe you guys have had a chance to speak with us or to visit our campus. Um, but just a little bit about us. Obviously we are located in Houston and we love being in one of the biggest cities in the country because we have so many cool opportunities for our students. Whether you're interested in being pre-med, we are near the largest medical center in the world. So we have so many volunteer job internship opportunities for our students. We're the energy capital of the world. We have over 24 500, Fortune 500 companies nearby. So again, so many great opportunities and so many companies who come to recruit on campus specifically for students for so many different opportunities, whether that's medical, engineering, business, etc. There's so much here for our students. And on top of these job and career opportunities, um, there are just so many fun things for our students as well. We have um, so many sports teams, we have the rodeo, we have so many opportunities for um, food, concerts, etc. Just like such a great place to be in. We do have public transportation that comes directly to our campus. So it's so easy for students, whether or not you have a car to get out into Houston to see more of what our city has to offer. Um, and another one of our um, just big selling points and favorite things about our campus is that the diversity on our campus really reflects the diversity of the city of Houston. Um, we have students from hundreds of different countries. We have over 45 languages spoken on campus. You can literally walk around campus and um, hear like several different languages spoken at a time. Um, and our, again, our diversity on campus really reflects the diversity of the city of Houston as a whole. And I think that's something that really makes us stick out as a university and is something really special that we're able to offer our students. Um, next, we'll get into just a little bit about our application process this year. Um, we do have the opportunity for students to apply with or without a test score. That's something that you would indicate on your application, either on Apply Texas or the Common App. Um, after you apply, you would then pay your application fee. Um, we do have opportunities for fee waivers for students. And then something new we're doing this year is students are able to self-report their transcript information. Um, you'll only be self-reporting your math, English, science, and social studies courses. And that really speeds up our application process. So we're able to get a decision back to you quicker. And then if you decide to apply with a test score, you'll have to submit those as well. But again, there are opportunities for students to apply with or without test scores. We can go next into um, our, our requirements. Oh, I'm sorry, it sounds like I, my audio might not be working. Since we're ha um, 
Kelsey's having some technical difficulties. I'm going to go ahead and take over. If y'all at some point can't hear me, feel free to uh, jump in on the chat. So the way it's going to work when it comes to admissions requirements, based on the class rank, it'll be the SAT or ACT required. If you're top 10%, then it's assured admission. Uh, keep in mind that you'll have the option of applying with or without test scores. So if you're like, you know what, I don't want my test scores to be considered, then you can apply without them. We won't, uh, in that case, we won't be needing them. Um, when it comes to the uh, application deadline, if you see right at the bottom, fall 2022 has the actual deadline, it's May 31st of next year, but the scholarship priority deadline will be um, May, no, November 1st of this year. So if you wanna be considered for any NEA scholarships through the University of Houston, make sure we have your application and your documents in by the priority deadline that it's in a couple of weeks. This is what we're going to be looking for if you're applying with no test scores. So again, top 10% assured admission. How it's going to work when we're not using test scores is that we're going to look at your high school grades. So uh, we're looking into those English, math, science, and social studies courses only, no electives. So the calculated unweighted GPA is not the one listed on your transcript. We're going to calculate that using only those courses. Keep in mind that if you are applying to some of the programs that are a bit more competitive, we're talking about business, we're talking engineering, natural sciences, so like uh, nursing or technology, they will ask for a specific GPA or a test score from you. If you're applying to our architecture program, which is a great program here at UH, they are going to encourage you to submit a portfolio. Uh, a portfolio would be like five to eight examples of your work, so like drawing, painting, um, photography. That way they can know that you have some background that will be helpful for you when it comes to the classes. When you're looking into the College of Arts, depending on what you're applying for, if it's like art, uh, graphic design, they will ask for also a portfolio. But if we're talking about performance, theater, uh, dance, they will ask for you to come in in addition. Now, when it comes to uh, tuition, uh, if you are graduating from a high school here in Texas, then you're considered a Texas resident. That is this amount that you're looking on the screen, it's a, for a whole year, full-time students, so just keep that in mind. If you're coming in from anywhere outside of Texas, uh, you're considered a non-resident, and that's the amount that you'll be looking at to like the 271110. Uh, and you are not required to live on campus, but it's definitely, definitely encouraged so that way you don't have to worry with about the hassle of like finding an apartment, setting up utilities, everything like that. Again, I'm going to stress, stress, stress this enough. The priority deadline is November 1st of four scholarships. The FAFSA priority deadline is January 15th. So you can still fill out your FAFSA application after that, but just keep in mind, try to stick to those priority deadlines how that way you can be considered. We have some grants for Texas residents, such as the Cougar Promise. Uh, for that one, it's no separate application. We get your information from FAFSA and some of the scholarships. If you're coming out from out of state, well, all of the yes preps are from like Texas, but if you were to be coming from out of state, if you get um, scholarships to the University of Houston of more than $1,000, then you are eligible for the out-of-state tuition waiver. We also have a fixed tuition program. Uh, so basically, it's called UHM4. You sign up for it on your, your orientation if you're interested in it. And that way, if tuition were to go up, you, are not, you don't have to worry about it because you are under that fixed tuition option. And just one last thing to wrap it up. Um, if you look at it, University of Houston, definitely worth it. We are, our average national cost, our average college cost is under the national average. Also is our typical total debt from students. So the students tend to graduate with a little less debt than um, in the national average, but our average salary after attending UH is above the national average. All right. Well, thank you so much, University of Houston. I apologize for any of the technical difficulties that we experienced, but you all did a great job. And we are going to keep going to our next institution now. We're going to hear from the University of Miami. Take it away whenever you're ready. Fabulous. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is great to be here with you. My name is Larissa Marple, and I work for Miami University located in Oxford, Ohio. So Miami University was established in the year 1809. We are the 10th oldest public institution in the United States, and we were founded before Florida was a state. So if you're wondering why our name is Miami, we were named after the Native American tribe in this area. 
we are a campus of nearly 20,000 students. Right now we're sitting about 17,000 undergraduate students, about 2,500 graduate students, and we have students from 47 states and 75 countries currently. Even though we have that larger campus, our average class size is only 30. So large campus on paper, but it doesn't feel like that once you are in the classroom. You're going to know everyone who's in your class, and you're going to be um, taught by your professors. We are considered an original public IV institution. This is a list of colleges that started um, decades ago that we continue to be on, and it is just schools in which you are paying a public school price, but you are getting an Ivy League level education, and you're going on to careers that students who graduate from Ivy League schools are going on to as well. Our professors are ranked top 10 in the country for undergraduate teaching. That may not mean a whole lot to you right now, but essentially that means that our professors actually teach our classes. So on a lot of college campuses, you might have an experience where you have a graduate student or a research assistant that is teaching your class, not the actual tenured professor. At Miami, we are really focused on the in-classroom experience. So that average class size of 30 with the professors in the class at all times. It's a really hands-on education. And typically most of our students that graduate say the most kind of formative experience they had was a professor at Miami University while they were in their undergraduate career. Outside the classroom, we want you to get involved. We have over 600 student organizations on campus. It is a really active and involved student body. So it is not a campus where you're just sitting in your dorm room on the weekends or don't have anything to do. You're going to be out in the community. This is a picture of what we call mega fair, which happens once every semester. And all of our student organizations post up tables so that you can get to know what opportunities there are on campus for you. We also have 19 Division I varsity sports teams. We are most known for our our hockey, but coming from Texas, I also live in Houston, and I don't know a whole lot about hockey, but I know the games are really fun. We also have your traditional football, basketball, baseball, et cetera, as well. In addition to Division I athletics, we have 50 club sports teams and over 600 intramural teams, so there is lots to do if you want to continue to play sports while you're in college. We have study abroad programs in over 90 countries, but the one that we love to boast about is our campus in Luxembourg. We own and operate this campus over in Europe. Students go to classes Monday through Thursday, and then Friday through Sunday, there are excursions that are optional that students can go to. We are ranked top five in the country for study abroad participation. Over half of our students will study abroad before they graduate. As far as careers, we're going to place students all over the country and all over the world. So no matter where you want to go after your collegiate career, we will help you get there. This is a picture for, for some of our biggest cities that we are placing students in, both nationally and internationally. But truly, you can go anywhere in the world with a degree from Miami University. The town of Oxford itself is a true college town. So we have this wonderful quote from one of our past presidents. It says, all roads don't lead to Oxford. To get here, you have to want to get here. But once you're here, you never want to leave. Oxford, Ohio is about 45 minutes north of Cincinnati. You can see pictured here, it has red brick roads. This is the uptown area that is just adjacent to campus. Everything is walking distance. It is kind of like a little cute collegiate quintessential college town that feels like it's the middle of nowhere. We don't have any major highways that run through us. Um, but again, only about 45 minutes from Cincinnati. It is a really tight knit community and a really, really special place. Here's a little bit about our scholarships. So any student that has finished their junior year with a 3.5 weighted GPA or higher is going to get merit scholarship as long as you apply by December 1st. So I know that UH said November 1 was their deadline for us. It's December 1. So keep that in mind. But if you have that 3.5, you are guaranteed up to $12,000 in merit scholarship. If you have a 4.3 or above, you're looking at getting close to full tuition potentially. So definitely something to keep in mind. Application wise, we are on the Common App, we're test optional, and we don't have any supplements. It's a very straightforward application process, and listed here are the deadlines. The big one to keep in mind again is December 1st. November 1 is a great option for applying early action or early decision. Early decision is binding, early action is not. But even if you apply early action by, December, by November 1st, you get an answer by December 15th. So you get that before the holidays. You can tell your family to leave you alone, that you are going to college and you're going to be successful. 
So that is just a little bit about us. There's obviously a lot more that I would love to cover, but please feel free to check us out online. I will drop my contact information in the chat. We are a really wonderful option for students that are interested in looking out of state. It is going to feel like a home away from home. So love and honor is our um, kind of quote and our saying, and I would love for you to check us out online. Thank you for being here today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the schools. Um, I guess I'll begin presenting since I am next to go. Give me one second, guys. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> okay, can everybody see that? Okay, great. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Christy, and today I'm going to be talking about the University of South Florida. Again, this is me. I'm a use she, her pronouns, and I am the regional recruiter advisor for the state of Texas. Um, so just an overview of the University of South Florida. We were uh, founded in 1956, so we are a relatively young university. And though we are young, we do maintain an overall enrollment of around 50,000 students, uh, 37,000 of which are our undergraduate students. And even though we are a big school, we still maintain a student to faculty ratio of 21 to one, which gives us an average class size of around 33 students. Um, as far as diversity goes, USF really prides itself with diversity, with 41% of our USF students coming from diverse backgrounds, and we do have students from all 50 states and 40, 145 different countries. Um, we do have close to 200 majors and concentrations across our 14 academic colleges, uh, which means that odds are whatever it is you're looking to major in, we probably have it at USF. We are America's fastest rising university, so we are ranked 46 by US uh, News and World Report. Um, fastest rising just means we are quickly rising in the rankings. So if you look at the rankings from last year compared to now, we have jumped quite a lot, um, which just means we are on, are on the right trajectory to make our way to the top, and we are very proud of this fact. Uh, USF is one university geographic, geographically distributed. So what that means is when I'm referring to the University of South Florida, I'm talking about all three of our college campuses. So we have campus locations in Tampa, St. Petersburg, and Sarasota Manatee. Each campus offers something a little bit different, a little bit unique, and you actually get to select your campus when you apply. So um, I encourage you to really think about what you're looking for in a college experience and base your decision off of that. So our Tampa campus, where life's lived larger. It is in it. Tampa is a big metropolitan city. Um, this is the largest of our three campuses. So when you think large public institution, if that's kind of the vibe you're going for, I'd recommend our Tampa campus. St. Petersburg, a little bit smaller where city meets sand. Um, St. Petersburg is a beautiful uh, beach town. So if you're maybe interested in marine biology um, or you just wanna be by the water and you're into outdoor recreation, I'd recommend that campus. Um, and Sarasota Manatee is the smallest of the three. It only has a couple thousand students on that campus. Um, so they maintain an average class size of 13 to one. So very small. Think private school feel, but for a public school price. So again, you get to choose what campus would you apply. As far as student life, we have over a thousand student organizations on our campus. So there's definitely ways to get involved and meet people and you'll never be bored on campus because we also have over a thousand on-campus events. These vary from concerts, celebrity guest lectures, movies and art exhibits. So again, won't get bored on campus. We are at NCAA Division I Athletics, so we play in the American Conference. So if you're interested in sports and maybe that college game day experience, we do have that. If you're interested in playing sports but don't necessarily want to play at that D1 level, we do have our recreation and intramural sports. Again, just a good way to get involved. Um, our bull market happens every week. It's kind of like a big club fair that happens on campus, so you don't have to go very far to, um, to find out about these clubs. We do have a Publix on campus. That's my personal favorite fun fact. Um, it's very convenient for our students to have a Publix right on campus. They just walk outside of their residence hall and it's right there. And week of welcome, that happens the first week of every semester and it just kind of helps to kickstart the semester and get students excited for what's to come. 
Kind of switching gears now to some freshman admissions information. So when you apply, um, you could apply on the Common App, the Coalition App, or our website. Doesn't matter which one you choose, just whatever's easiest. And our application is very simple. All we need is a $30 application fee or an application fee waiver, your official high school transcript, and your official ACT or SAT test scores. That's it. Once you submit all of that material, your application is complete and we will review it. Um, our application is based strictly on academics, so we don't need a personal statement or letters of recommendation or anything like that. I've included our admitted freshman profile on here, so it does tell you kind of um, what the average admitted student, what their GPA and what their test score was, just to give you an idea of what we're looking for. These are not the requirements. Again, this is just to give you an idea of the range we are looking for. In regards to tuition and fees, um, you would look at that out of state line and all in tuition fees, housing, books, and other. You're looking at around $35,000 for the academic year. Um, 17,000 of that is just your tuition and fees. And yes, $35,000 is a lot of money. However, we have some of the lowest tuition rates in the country um, and very competitive rates for our out of state students. So our rates are often the same, if not lower, um, than in state rates at non Florida universities. So when you're looking at schools, this is definitely something to consider because this is going to be a reoccurring expense. But one of the ways to offset that tuition cost is going to be through scholarships and waivers, which we do offer for our out of state students. You can kind of see them at the bottom there. Um, these are based solely on merit. So if you have the GPA, you have the test score and you apply by the deadline, you automatically get that scholarship. So you'll see it starts at a 3.5 and a 1210 or a 25 ACT, and then it goes up from there. Um, and these are a four year award. So if you do get the scholarship, you can maintain it all four years. So kind of winding down now with some deadlines to remember, our application is currently open and big deadline I want you guys to remember is December 1st, apply by December 1st, that's our priority deadline. Um, but if you don't make the December 1st deadline, don't panic. Um, second big deadline, January 15th, that's the completion deadline for admission scholarships that I just spoke on. And then if you don't meet January 15th, you do have until April 1st. And then May 1st, admissions deposit deadline. That's pretty standard across the board. So I know that was a lot of information um, that I threw at you guys, but if you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat and I'll also put my contact information as well. But thank you guys so much and go Bulls. Thank you so much, USF. We loved hearing from you. I appreciate that. And thanks for handling the transition while I got kicked out too. I appreciate it. We are going to go ahead and keep on moving along now, turning it over to the University of New Orleans. Whenever you're ready, take it away. Hey, good morning, y'all. My name is Todd Gitlin. I'm one of the recruiters for the University of New Orleans. I have a brief PowerPoint uh, to give you some more information about UNO, and I'm happy to answer any questions after that. Um, so uh, the University of New Orleans is a four-year public research university located in what I think is the greatest city in the world, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, come on. Um, we are, New Orleans is the largest metropolitan area in Louisiana, best known for its cross-cultural and multilingual heritage. So this is great. You know, one, you have the opportunity to go do really cool things like see live music, go get beignets, um, but you also have a lot of opportunities for internships and for volunteers or and to volunteer. The University of New Orleans is located just 15 minutes away from the heart of the city, the French Quarter. Uh, you can just hop on a bus and be down there in a second. And uh, the city of New Orleans has been ranked uh, one of the best cities for young professionals in America. Um, so this is a really good opportunity to be in a really exciting, innovative place while you're getting your college degree. Um, our total student population is around 8,400 students, of which 70 or 6,900 are undergraduates. Um, within the student population, uh, all 64 Louisiana parishes, all 50 states, and all 100 countries are represented. We have over uh, 50 majors that um, include uh, film, music, computer science, uh, and a bunch of engineering programs, including one that's unique to UNO called the Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering Program. That's for students who are interested in building ships or oil rigs or really anything that 
floats and sustains itself on the water. One of the really unique things about the University of New Orleans is that our average class size is 27. Um, so your students really have the opportunity to get the individualized academic support that they need in order to be successful. Um, for me, this was something when I was looking at colleges that was really important. I didn't wanna just be a number in a classroom. I wanted the ability to create relationships both with my professors and also my peers. We are a research university and we have over uh, 12 different research centers com committed to graduate and undergraduate research. Students as early as their freshman year are encouraged to take part in their own research or help a professor with their research. The latter option is really cool because one, you may get published, which is something that always looks good on a resume, but two, you get paid to do it. So not only are you building your resume, you're getting paid to do it. Um, we have over 110 student organizations, everything from service organizations to religious organizations to uh, Greek life. If there's ever something that you feel like is missing, all you need to do is find a couple friends, find a faculty advisor, and UNO will help pay uh, to ensure that that club is created. We have a number of service opportunities um, in the city of New Orleans, uh, often run through the student organizations, and a number of campus traditions. Some of my favorite include Jazz at the Sandbar, which is a weekly event where student ensembles come in and play with professional musicians. In the past, these musicians have included everyone from Alice Marsalis to um, Alan Toussaint and you know, a variety of people in between. We also have an event called uh, Suck Off, which is an all you can eat crawfish boil. That event takes place all day um, and it's just a lot of fun. And finally, we have Swamp Ball, um, which essentially is a mud volleyball tournament that takes place twice a year. And uh, students pay $10 and this goes towards uh, scholarships. Um, we are a division one university. Um, in the Southland Conference. One sport that you'll notice is missing is football. All of our sport or all of our homecoming events center around our basketball team. Um, and as a student, you'd be able to attend UNO uh, home games for free. In terms of our admission requirements, um, coming from out of state, you need a 2.5 GPA um, and you must meet 17 of 19 core credits. UNO is test optional for the year, meaning students don't need to send in their test scores to be admitted. Now we may ask for them later, but um, we would only need that to help place you in college level English or math. Um, if you're like me and you're not a great test taker or you don't send in your scores, you'd be eligible to attend UNO through something called privateer pathways. These are non-remedial classes designed to kind of ease that transition from high school to college. So students would take college level classes, but just get individual support around um, stuff like smaller class sizes, more one-on-one -on -one time with professors and priority registration. Um, if you're interested in applying, you can apply through the Common App or apply at apply.uno.edu. We normally have an application fee, however, it's waived through the end of October. Um, so if y'all are really interested, now's the time to do it um, without having to spend any money. And once you've applied, we're gonna need your transcripts and they can be sent to transcripts at uno.edu. Um, in terms of financial aid, in order to qualify for financial aid, uh, you need to complete the admissions process and file the FAFSA. The FAFSA is open uh, as of October 1st, and it makes you eligible for loans, grants, and work study. And our priority uh, registration uh, for scholarships is December 15th. Um, in terms of our scholarships, all of them are based on GPA and ACT or GPA alone. Um, there are no additional steps that a student needs to take <clears throat> in order to be eligible for a scholarship and we will always award to the highest possible award. So for example, if you have a 26 on the ACT and a 3.9 GPA, you would be awarded the President Scholarship, not the Provost Scholarship. Coming from the state of Texas, you are eligible for something called the Gulf State Promise. Um, this is a commitment by the University of New Orleans, New Orleans that says that any student coming from Texas will uh, will attend paying in-state tuition. And over uh, four years, this is a, a savings of about $20,000. Um, that's it for me. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to me. Feel free to uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
if you're interested in setting up a tour um, or a virtual tour, you can do that at visit.uno.edu. Um, thank you all so much. Great. Thank you very much, Todd. All right, next up, we've got University of Roehampton in London. Take it thank away, Amanda. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dan. I'll uh, get my screen shared here. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, guys. Um, um, I'm Amanda Lundberg, and I'm with the University of Roehampton in London, which is located in England. So I'm so excited to share a little bit more with you about studying in the UK. Um, I actually personally lived there for 12 years, so I love being able to talk to students about living there and studying there. I'll just get on to my next slide now. All right, so we are considered London's campus university, which is unique amongst London universities because um, we are situated on a 54 acre parkland setting. Um, and most universities in London have to be spread out across the city. So we're the only one with a single campus. Um, we have been providing education for 180 years. Um, and we're very proud that we were one of the first higher education um, colleges in the UK to educate women. We've been also been ranked um, again this year as a top 10 university in London. And you can see a little peak um, of our Regency architecture here. So we have a very diverse student population. We have just over 12,000 students enrolled of whom 28% come from outside of the UK and represent 146 nationalities. 93% uh, of our students are in employment or further study within six months of graduating. And um, we have six different academic departments that you can um, choose from across four colleges, which we'll look at in just a moment. Um, we're also ranked fifth amongst London universities for student satisfaction, which is, of course, very important to us. We're very much a research-led institution. We're the number one modern university in London for the quality of research. We're also the most research-intensive modern university within the whole of the UK. 66% of our research is, uh, on campus is of world-class standard, within, and in, within some departments, 100% is, is classed as world-class. So here you can see the proximity to central London. We're just down the River Thames from London's tourist attractions. Um, we're also very near Wimbledon where the annual tennis happens um, and also across from London, one of London's eight royal parks. Um, so it's a beautiful green setting. Public transportation in London is fantastic um, and you'll have a huge variety of buses and trains and tubes and trams to get around. And we also have a free university bus that takes you all around the city as well, um, which is really, which is a great way to save some money. So our campus is lush and green, as I've said, um, but also with the close proximity to London, you get the best of both worlds, both city and nature. Uh, the university is comprised of four historic colleges, as I mentioned, um, similar to other UK and US um, collegiate systems, but as we like to give as an example, closer to the Harry Potter films. <laughs> um, each college offers loads of great facilities and amenities, um, sorts, such as sports, um, different kinds of gyms, cafes, and social spaces. And the, college, the colleges also provide a fantastic community within the community at Roehampton. So you'll note here that our degrees in the UK are shorter than the ones in the US. So you could have two degrees, a bachelor's and a master's in the time it takes you to get one here in the US. Um, these are our six academic departments. Um, with these subject areas, there's, there's actually more combinations online if you have a look on our website. But you can either choose a single subject or you can also combine subjects with majors. Um, with a major and a minor or even a double major with no general education requirements within the whole of the UK. Um, UK degrees are academically challenging, but very rewarding and very specialized degrees. So requirements are gonna vary from program to program, um, but very generally we look at um, between a 2.8 to a 3.0 GPA. Uh, we are completely test optional. We were one of the first in the UK to do so, um, though you can still submit your scores if you have taken them, so it's only gonna help. Um, some subjects will require particular grades um, from within um, 11th or 12th grade. We also accept IP curriculum, if any schools are, are, are um, if you're part of that kind of curriculum. Um, and you can also transfer to us as well if you wanted to start off at a community college and then move over. So 
So making an application, super simple. You can either apply through UCAS, which is similar to the Common App. It's the UK's version of it, basically. Um, or you can apply for free on our um, website, of course. We have rolling admission, um, which means there's no hard deadlines to apply. Um, we also have three different intakes. You can apply for um, September and January, and we also just opened up an April intake as well. So depending on when you want to start, you've got some options. So in terms of overall cost, this is um, this is one one of the biggest questions I get. Um, we are very affordable, especially considering that you're saving a whole year of tuition with our three year degree programs. We have numerous scholarships. Most of our U.S. students qualify for one or more of these. Um, and then we also uh, accept FAFSA. So you can um, you can apply through FAFSA for federal loans um, as well. And then you can see the, the tuition costs as well as the overall costs here. So we may be cheaper than some of your in-state or even out-of-state options. Um, so a little bit about accommodation. We do guarantee accommodation for U.S. and international students. We offer different rooms for different kinds of students, and they're all single um, occupancy rooms. So you get your own room and possibly even your own ensuite bathroom, and they all have shared kitchens and um, social spaces. So much more like, of a, of like an apartment life rather than dorms. So we have a lot going on on campus, of course, just as you would probably expect. Um, you'll have a fantastic social experience um, no matter what you're into, whether it's sports or volunteering, if you're looking for a great nightlife. Um, we have tons of societies, which is what we call clubs in the UK. 59% um, of our students are, are first in their families to go to university, and we're really proud to celebrate the diversity um, on our campus um, as, for, with, our, with our students as well as our staff. And as you can see, the ethos at um, Roehampton is based on social justice and equality with the focus of putting everyone on an equal playing field, which we're really proud of. So just a quick snapshot of our sports. Collegiate sports in the UK, very different from the US. You're not gonna find any games televised. You're not gonna find the same kind of divisions as such, um, but you definitely still have the chance to compete against other schools and in different leagues. Um, these are our competitive sports, but you can also play for fun or for fitness if you'd rather. Um, and I will draw your eye to the bottom. If you are a soccer player, we have a brand new fantastic program where we've partnered with the Premier League Club Crystal Palace. They are a professional oh. soccer team in the UK, um, and you can train with them while you're getting your degree with us. And that's it from me. Um, there's a whole bunch of QR codes there if you wanted to get some more information. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, please do get in touch if you have any questions. I'll put my info in the chat. But thanks again for... Um, for allowing us to visit with you today and good luck with your college search. Perfect, thank you so much, Amanda. Yeah. All right, so next we're gonna move on to our Q&A process. I also know that there's uh, quite a few uh, questions in the Q&A that have been typed by our students. So uh, I know that the reps are working on getting those answered. So be, please be patient there, there's quite a few of them. So we're now gonna move on to uh, some question and answer with our reps. If everyone, if I can ask all of our reps to turn their cameras back on, we will go in the same order that you presented in. And our first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? I will go ahead and turn that over to our first rep. Uh, I think it was University of Houston that one first. Hi, yes, it was University of Houston. Um, in terms of advice for students in the college process, I think it's always a good option to take some time to think or even make a list about what you're looking for in a college experience, what majors you're interested in, if you're interested in studying abroad, if you want a large university, a small university, if you want um, a university in a large city or like a small college town, um, because there are so many options out there for universities. As you've seen already even in this presentation. Um, so think about what's important to you, what you want out of your college experience. And then if you're able to visit as many colleges as you're able to, just to, you'll hear this a lot, to, but, but to see what the experience is like of particular universities. And I know within the last couple of years, a lot of um, universities, University of Houston included, has had some um, online virtual tours available. So even if you're not able to go tour all of these different college campuses, you can at least do a virtual tour of, try to do as many as you're interested in to really, again, get the idea of what it's like to be a student there. 
Yeah, and I would piggyback off of that and say broaden your horizons and check out schools that maybe you've never heard of or that you just kind of come across because there are so many options out there. There are over 4,000 colleges in the United States alone, and that's not even including all of our wonderful international friends. So I would definitely recommend checking out colleges online. A silver lining of COVID is that there are lots of virtual opportunities right now to learn about different schools. And I think there is a misconception that going out of state means that automatically it's going to cost more. And that's not always the case. There are a lot of merit scholarship opportunities and financial aid available for students out of state. So it might even cost less to go to school out of state than it does in state. So check it out. You never know until you apply. And I would definitely recommend just broadening those horizons because there are so many great options out there. I would say my biggest advice um, to students in this process is to reach out to your admissions counselor, your admissions recruiter. Um, you've heard just from here that a lot of us work specifically with students in Texas. So we're here to help you. This is why, you know, we have our job. So reach out to us, you know, um, ask us questions and, you know, we're here to help. Um, yeah, you know, just to piggyback off of what everyone said, you know, the best advice that I can give is um, do your research. You know, when I think of college, there are a couple of things that I always push, you know, think about internships, volunteer opportunities, think about costs. Um, but more than anything, you guys know yourself better than we do. Um, and you know what works for you and what you don't want. This is a really stressful process. Um, if y'all have any, we've all been through it. If y'all have any questions or need anything, we are here to help you. And we are here to make sure that you make the best choice that you want for your college experience. Yeah, and I would definitely say I would agree with everything that's been said. Um, I I would def my biggest piece of advice would be again, like it was said, to contact one of us. We have we're that's what we're here for. I wish I had someone like one of us to talk to when I was trying to figure out my like where to go. Um, and you know, a lot of us, um, if we haven't, if we're not alumni of our schools, we've been on campus. We've talked to the alumni. We know a lot about the campuses that we're representing. We're, we know a lot about the cities we're representing. Um, and many of us have probably lived there as well. So I'd say definitely reach out to one of us if you have any questions at all, because that's the best advice that I would have loved to have at your, at your age. Excellent. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, everyone, for that. Our next question is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? We'll go in that same order. University of Houston? Yes, thank you. That's a tough one. One thing. Um, I'd say for one thing, and I know I've mentioned this a couple times in our presentation and in the chat, is um, the benefits of being in Houston. And again, I know a lot of you students are in Houston, and there's also obviously so many cool opportunities to go to another city. Um, but Houston just has so much to offer. Even if you've lived here your whole entire life, there's still new things to explore. There's still a lot of volunteer opportunities, job internship opportunities, um, and just new things to see and even with new people in college. So that's one of my favorite parts about the University of Houston is our incredible location. I would say the one thing I want you to remember about Miami University is that you're not going to be a number, you're going to be treated really individually. So the benefit of having those small classes, having a really large, robust faculty is that you're going to get really individualized attention. So if you are a student that um, wants to have that really strong in-classroom academic experience, we can be a really good fit for you. something to remember about the University of South Florida is, you know, our location. So we have three different campus locations, Tampa being our biggest, and that's a big metropolitan city. Um, and being in a big city really does have its perks. And we are a large institution, but the really great thing about a big school is you can make it feel small. You can't make, you know, take a small school and make it bigger than it actually is. So uh, definitely don't let that scare you. Um, and let me know if you have questions. Um. You know, I don't know if there's one particular thing that I can say about UNO. Um, I would say one thing that really stands out to me is the internship opportunities, being in a large city like New Orleans um, that has a lot of opportunities for volunteering and internship. 
is something that's really important. More and more, there's research coming out on the importance of internships, um, just you know, for a student's career. Um, and being in a city that's named, you know, one of the top cities for young professionals, where there are a lot of opportunities in film, music, engineering, like medicine, you know, you really have a lot of opportunities to go out and help yourself stand out while you're in uh, college. I'd say for Roehampton, um, just because of the location, you're in such a fantastic place. So I think the one thing to remember about us is just um, the fantastic international experience you're going to get um, with such a diverse, um, you know, cultural um, hub uh, it being being in London. Um, but also, I think just the inclusivity as well. So it's kind of a, a, a double barrel there. So the inclusivity on campus, we really do value the diversity that we have. And we do want to make sure that every student has um, an equal chance um, at achieving their dreams, achieving their goals. So that's that's really important to remember about us too. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. We are just at time. Um, I know there are a number of questions still in the Q&A. If there's anything that you want, any of our reps want to address verbally real quick, uh, I can give you a minute there. Um, I know we weren't able to get to everything. Anything else anyone else needs to wants to address? We did get this question a lot. and. Um... I just want to point it out. Uh, they talked about the student clubs and activities. At UH, we have over 550 student organizations, and we also have Greek Life. So it's kind of hard for us to kind of list it out in each one of the questions. Uh, so yeah, there's 550. So there's definitely something for everyone. Great. Perfect. All right. Well, I want to extend a very grateful thank you to our reps for joining us this morning and to our students. We had a great audience. Thanks so much for all your questions. Have an excellent rest of your morning. And for your students, please join our next session that is going to be starting in about 15 minutes here. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks you so much.